Hello everyone, welcome to our new video. Our Google Ads series is going on. If you want to watch the whole series, you can come to our channel and watch those videos from here. Okay, so in today's lecture, we'll be discussing about RLSA campaign. What is RLSA campaign and what are the benefits of using it? And in the later part of the video, we'll see how to create RLSA campaign practically. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So we are in the documentation of our stream where we'll get to know more about RLSA campaign. First of all, what are remarketing lists for search ads, RLSs? Remarketing list for search ads is a Google Ads feature that allows advertisers to tailor their search campaigns based on whether a user has previously visited their website or app and and the pages uh, that user viewed. RLSs can be used in two ways. One is making bid adjustments on your ad groups for users remarketing list who are searching on Google using the keywords you are bidding on. And next one is set up search ad groups to be triggered and show ads if a user is on your remarketing list and is searching with the keywords you are bidding on. RLSs are totally different from traditional display remarketing. The name remarketing list for search ads can be a bit misleading and sounds like it's the same concept as display remarketing. But on the search network, this isn't the case though. The only thing RLSs have in common with display remarketing is that they both use cookies to track users and add them to list for the advertisers use. The way those lists are used for RLSs is totally different than that of traditional display remarketing. While in standard remarketing delivers ads to users when they are browsing on the Google display network, RLSs don't just automatically show text ad to users just because they are on your remarketing list. The users still need to be actively searching on Google using the keywords you are bidding on within your search campaigns. So what are the benefits of using RLSS? So they have mentioned some of the benefits of using RLSS. So let's read them. First one is make the most of a very small ad spend. By using RLSS, you can choose to only have your search ads shown to users who have already visited your site. This means your small budget will last a lot longer than on standard search ad because the users seeing your ads are potentially a more qualified audience as they must already be aware of your brand having already visited your site. The only caveat for this strategy is that you need at least thousand members on a remarketing list for it to be used on the search network which means you need traffic levels of thousand unique visitors or more on your site within the time frame that you use for your remarketing list okay next one is bid on more generic terms but only for the most qualified users I almost always avoid bidding on Vagu or generic keyword in search campaign as they tend to be expensive and generate very low level of conversions. With RLSS, you can reduce the risk of bidding on more generic keywords because your audience is more qualified. Next benefit is test your brand campaign. There are so many benefits of bidding on the brand name. Okay. Uh, having said that, I understand that some clients may not have the same point of view or may have tested it and found that it didn't significantly boost conversions enough to justify the ad spend for it. With RLSS, you could create a brand campaign and ad group that targets only users who have previous who have not previously visited your website. This is ideal if your campaign is focused particularly on driving new visitors as you can isolate the brand spend on just new users. Naturally, this strategy may not see as many directly attributed conversion 
as when you run a brand campaign without RLSS. Yeah. Because many users will search your brand when returning to site to purchase. But it's nice way to justify a brand campaign if your client isn't keen on using ad spend to bring returning users back to the site via PPC brand searches. Okay. Next one is upsell to converted users. There are often times when you might not want to advertise for particular products or services on your site. For example, if they are particularly low profit margin products, naturally poor converters or have a high return rate. Using RLSS, you may be able to justify advertising on these terms because you know the audience seeing the ads is more qualified. Next benefit is tailor your ad text and landing pages to existing users. One of the biggest benefits of RLSS is that you can tailor your ad text based on whether a user has already visited your site or even completed a purchase. Okay. Then you can exclude converted users from your campaign. For some businesses, a user is no longer available once they have completed the desired action on your website. For example, a digital marketing agency may not want to show their ads to the user who have already submitted an inquiry to them because they are probably in the process of talking to the user about their services. So it would be a waste of ad spend to keep serving them ads for at least the next 30 days while they are in talks with them. Okay. We don't competitor terms only when the user has already visited your website. Competitor name is, uh, name bidding can some sometimes get great results if it's done strategically. Using RLSS, you can create a campaign where your bid where you bid on your competitors' brand names. Okay, so you can also make bid adjustments for your RLSS audience. Like you can increase your bids where users are of particular value to you, you know. So there are times when you might feel you don't need to go as in-depth with your RLS strategies like the ideas above, but you do want to use audience targeting to tailor your bids where a potential success is more valuable to. For example, if you are running a lead generation campaign and a user had visited your contact page but not submitted a contact form. You may wish to bid up to 10% for that user when they next search to see if you can tempt them back into the site to complete their query. Okay. Similarly, you can decrease bids where users aren't valuable to you. Okay. Use RLSA data in your com uh, in your conversion based automated bid strategies. If an if you don't think any of the strategies above are right from your campaign, you can still benefit from layering RLSS on your search campaign if you have conversion-based automated bid strategies in your campaign. Okay, so they have given us instructions on how to implement RLSS. So I'll share this doc file with you so that you can study further about RLSS campaigns and what are the benefits of using them and well, when should you use RLSA campaign, when you should not, okay? So let's see how we can practically implement RLSA campaign. So I have created a campaign called Auto Plumbing Service Lead. So this is basically a general search campaign where I have an ad group and inside ad groups, I have all the keywords, you know? So I'm gonna targeting those keywords, commercial plumbing service, commercial plumbers near me, commercial plumbing contractors, commercial plumbing repair, commercial kitchen plumbing, industrial plumbers near me. So those are the keywords. So I have already created an audience. If I go to the audience manager, then if I scroll down a little bit, you can see over here. So I'm gonna, use this space, you know, so I have created an audience called people who visited contact us page, but did not visit thank you page. That means 
people who have visited our contact us page. Just wait a little bit. And they, they didn't fill up this form and didn't go to the contact, uh, thank you page. Okay. So I want to make an audience with those user and create a remarketing list for search set for those specific audience, you know. So I'm going to go to the campaign and for setting up RLSA, I'm going to choose the campaign. So this is our campaign. Then I'm going to choose the ad groups. Then I'll go to the audience section for setting up remarketing list. Then from the audience segments, I'm going to click on add audience segments. So you can either set it up in the campaign level or ad group level. So I'm going to choose ad groups from here. And we have two options available here, like targeting and observation. So what are the two benefits, uh, two differences? What are the differences between targeting and observation? So observation uh, targeting means, uh, as I already uh, told you about the audience that I have created. So if I click on targeting, then I will be targeting for those specific audiences, like people who have visited our contact us page, but did not visit it. Thank you page, you know, so you can see we are narrowing our targeting. You know, you can see over here, narrow the reach of your ad group to the selected segment. So those segments are selected. That means those who have visited our contact us page, but did not visit our thank you page. So it will be target. It will be targeted those this specific audience. And if I choose observation, then what it will do, it will uh, target the specific audience and it will also target the general or new users. Like I will have some users are searching for those keywords, you know. So I want to target the new users and I want to target the uh, audience segmented users as well. So I would suggest you to use observation from here and for choosing the segmented audience, I'm gonna go to the browse section and if I click on your data segment and I'm gonna choose website visitors, then if I click, uh, if I scroll down a little bit, then you can see an option called people who visited contact us page but did not visit thank you page. So this is for last 60 days users. Okay, so I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna click on save. Okay, perfect. Then if I click on show table, then you can see the performance of this specific audience from here, you know. So what I want to do basically, when user is coming to my contact us page from these segments who have contact, uh, who have visited our contact us page but did not visit thank you page, I want to bid aggressively. Like I want to give 15% bid increment, you know. So I'm going to click on save. Then you can see over here that I am uh, increasing my bids 15% for this specific audience. So this is for our remarketing list search ads audience, you know. So yeah, that's how you can set up your remarketing list search ads. So hopefully you have a clear understanding on how we can set up pre-marketing list for search ads. So if you like our video, then you can subscribe our channel, follow our page. You have a good day. Bye-bye.